So hello, everyone. Thanks for joining our presentation. Uh, a failover from OpenStack to AWS in base OSCI and TFT. My name is Miroslav Atkerti. I'm the team lead of the testing farm team and also work in Linux QE. Today, I'm joined here uh, together with Miloš Prechlík, principal QE also in testing farm team in Linux QE and the main developer of the, of the service that we'll be uh, showing you today and uh, another software QE uh, uh, engineer here in uh, Evgeny Fedin also from our team. So what we have prepared for you today, we're going in a little bit into the introduction and problem space, show you the use cases that we are trying to solve uh, with, uh, with this failover. Uh, then uh, we will briefly look at the architecture of the service that we have creating, some details of its programmable routing drivers, uh, metrics, uh, APS, API, and CLI, uh, uh, the, the main interfaces. We will show you how you can deploy the service yourself and how what is our setup and also future plans. So a testing farm team is a team which is developing, maintaining, and running a testing system as a service, which is now backing Fedora CI, Packet, and RHEL CI. So these uh, services are using it to as a testing backend. So we are doing all the testing for them. Uh, also, we run an internal Red Hat based OS CI, uh, CI system. Uh, that, that we also maintain and run. And, and the service that is basically shared between those two services. Uh, important facts to mention from the start, so we are focused on testing the operating system. Uh, the, we uh, focus on RHEL, Fedora, and CentOS. Uh, we run several thousands of tests per month in our services. Uh, and we use multiple infrastructure providers uh, that we, where we provision mostly VMs or bare metal machines, because when you are testing operating system, usually container tests are not enough for most cases and for the functional tests, we need VMs or bare metal machines. So how did our testing pipeline uh, look before? So if you are testing an operating system, uh, usually your pipeline ends up, ends up something like this. This is a very simplified view where on the input, there is the, uh, there is the artifact uh, being that a package or a module which you are trying to integrate to the base operating system, then you have the testing process. And somewhere uh, somewhere in the testing process, you are provisioning the VMs, VMs uh, where you will be running your tests against. Uh, previously, we had separate pipelines for all the infrastructures that we support, uh, OpenStack, AWS, and Beaker. Uh, OpenStack and AWS are for VMs uh, mostly used, and Beaker is for bare metal machines. And, and it has some drawbacks. So this is how our pipeline looked before and what were the problems there? So uh, if there was an outage in one of the provisioning providers, uh, it usually me meant that the test pipeline would fail. And that was a pain for our users. Also, it was not possible to fail over between the different provisioners, even if they had the same capabilities, right? So for example, OpenStack and AWS, in terms of the VMs, they are similar infrastructures, but we couldn't transparently for the user to fail over between these infrastructures. Also, in case of usage spikes, so the some of the infrastructures are not, or, or no, none of them is actually infinite, right? So you can get into, into a state where you cannot provision uh, enough machines because you don't have uh, enough, some of the resources. So uh, in this case, where there are usage spikes, you cannot do anything about it. You're still using one infrastructure, the testing gets delayed, or in the worst case, fails. Uh, also, it's not possible then to cloud burst, right? You would like to cloud burst to a different compatible infrastructure in case of usage spikes. Uh, and also, well, what was the big downfall is that the pipeline needs to know details about how to provision the specific resource on that specific infrastructure. And uh, also, the pipeline needs to know before it is running what infrastructure it will be used because we have three different pipelines, right? So uh, to tackle all these problems, we have created a service which we call Artemis. It's a standalone service with well-defined API and uh, for hardware specification. It has programmable routing. We will be deep diving a little bit into the details later on. So you can program actually how it will choose the infrastructure, how it will do failover and cloud bursting according to your needs. Uh, it also takes care of uh, short-term outages. So uh, in Red Hat, we, we, as we use OpenStack, sometimes it happened that OpenStack was not stable. Uh, it, it worked. Uh, in, in some cases, returned 500 from the from the API, but in the next retries, it worked. Right. So these retries also is something that Artemis can take care of you and transparently do these more retries. And uh, 
just to mention that uh, we are focused or Artemis as the service is focused on getting one machine. If you need multi-host scenarios, whatever, that should be part of the pipeline. So it really is good only to get you currently one machine from the pool. In this example here, I have examples how uh, this could be set up. For example, on the right side, uh, we use as a primary infrastructure OpenStack. And if the OpenStack is down or it has an outage uh, uh, or could quota is full, we can move the workload transparently to the user to AWS. Uh, in case of uh, the left side, uh, we can leverage AWS and its ARM infrastructure. And if we are over budget, that, that we don't have enough money to use more AWS because that is a paid resource, uh, then we can uh, move to Beaker. And then for other architectures where we have no other option, we can just use, for example, Beaker. I'm, I let the, now the word to Milos for the Artemis internals. Uh, so we basically split the provisioning process from the first uh, moment to the, to, to the actual getting the final machine into several distinct steps that are repeatable and uh, that we can cancel in any time and uh, try again. And the service we built uh, to solve our troubles uh, basically is powered by uh, what we call the routing, which uh, is a script that uh, takes care of picking the suitable provisioner, suitable actual cloud service or beaker or whatever else. And uh, it's based on many inputs. And uh, the thing is that uh, we built on uh, on this routing that can happen anytime when we run into troubles with any of the uh, with any of the pools, uh, with any of the real services that we use for provisioning. Uh, we retry a lot. The tasks are designed to be retriable because our experience with these services is that are often uh, fragile. So we're trying again in a, in a couple of minutes with some exponential back off is uh, very, very useful for us. And uh, if we run into troubles, we can just try a different uh, kind of pool without bothering the user who's uh, behind the API. He doesn't have to be aware of uh, any troubles and doesn't really care about the actual uh, actual infrastructure used for the provisioning. The, uh, the, the internals, uh, the service is built on the top of a uh, queue and a broker with, uh, added, uh, with added uh, database for persistence. Uh, it provides uh, metrics and alerts uh, based on the standard Prometheus and Grafana setup. And uh, we throw in a uh, sentry for monitoring because uh, we don't like uh, when errors somehow slip our ent our attention. So if, uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, the service works with uh, what we call pools. They actually represent the actual uh, provisioning services like OpenStack, AWS, Azure, Beaker, whatever else we would like to connect to it. And uh, these pools, uh, each pool provides a different or maybe the same, it doesn't matter. Each pool provides a, some uh, virtual machines or bare metal machines with a particular configuration or configurations. It's uh, usually possible to get uh, more than one uh, virtual machine kind or from OpenStack or uh, Amazon Cloud. So we, we organize these uh, machines, these, uh, these flavors into several pools. And then we can basically switch transparently between those pools without involving the requester. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, you've been here. Yeah, uh, so uh, for communicating with uh, machine providers, we needed to create some unified interface. Uh, so we created the drivers. Uh, it's a layer between Artemis and the actual machine providers. Uh, they took care of uh, running command for the creating uh, instances in the providers itself. Also, they translate generic environment specification to cloud specific configuration. So, for example, OpenStack driver, a driver will translate uh, Compose to OpenStack image name and hardware specification to OpenStack flavor. Uh, 
Uh, also, drivers provide resource usage of a machine provider, such as number of used CPU cores, uh, used memory, number of instances, etc., as well as provides limits metrics to make sure we are not overusing uh, our providers. Uh, for now, we have available drivers for four machine providers, such as OpenStack, AWS, Speaker, and Azure. Next slide. Right, the heart of the survey is the core that takes uh, that makes the decisions. We call it uh, routing, and its only purpose is to pick the most suitable pool or pools for a given request. The request is usually uh, it usually specifies some uh, software requirements like uh, what kind of distribution or compose or whatever, and uh, hardware requirements uh, like uh, how much uh, RAM, for example, the user needs and this uh, this script it's a python script so we have uh, the the all, the whole power of the language is available to us with a couple of interfaces that artemis provides uh, to this script so uh, routing has access to the history of the provisioning to current state of all the pools involved so it can uh, check their metrics the rate of successful uh, provisionings and uh, usage of the resources and then there's a couple of uh, policies that uh, basically filters the input set of pools uh, to, to get a final list of uh, the most suitable pools for the provisioning. The faulty pools or the pools that uh, are exhausted are removed from this set. And at the end, you end up with a one, two, five pools that are possible to be used for the provisioning. and uh, that's it. If you if the provisioning uh, runs into troubles, for example, the pool suddenly uh, the the downstream OpenStack suddenly uh, has an outage or loses a connection to one of the pools, the Artemis will take care of restarting the provisioning from this point again, and the routing because it has access to the history of the provisioning and the pool metrics, it can basically pick another pool. I'll try again with the same one in a couple of minutes, hoping uh, things get uh, better. All the decisions are stored, it's uh, all monitored, all the errors are locked. So in case of troubles, humans are usually notified quite easily. Yeah, the metrics, uh, we try to provide metrics for most of the internals because uh, otherwise it's hard to tell what, what's going on. So Artemis uh, exports uh, many metrics and it will export uh, even more in the future. So uh, maintainers can get uh, insight into what uh, routing decisions were taken, uh, what's the usage of uh, resources in each of the pools, what, uh, what's, the, what's the fail rate, how many guests, uh, how, how many machines were provisioned from uh, different pools. Uh, what's the latency of API requests and so on? So next slide, please. Uh, for example, a couple of uh, couple of uh, charts and uh, from our downstream uh, monitoring panel, which should land in upstream repository soon. Hopefully, we can get uh, easy access to how much we use each pools, uh, how many uh, machines are we provisioning now, how many failovers we had uh, in the last uh, few hours. How, how often uh, was uh, a particular pool broken? So we were forced to use a uh, more uh, expensive one in uh, terms of uh, not just money, but uh, for example, if we try to provision something from Beaker, it takes more time, which is uh, delaying the testing. So this can also be involved in the routing. Our downstream routing prefers uh, cloud provisioners for a quicker turnaround, but if they are overused or uh, have an outage, we can fall back to Beaker, accept the penalty of uh, more time needed to provision the machine. Next slide, please. Yeah, for an example, this is uh, how Artemis uh, provides us with the uh, charts for pool usage, how many instances we already grabbed from an op from a OpenStack pool, for example. Yeah, next slide, please. So communicating with the 
Artemis is done by using uh, the API, which is designed to be fully REST compatible. Uh, it's based on poly um, polling mechanism. So when you submit a guest request, you need to periodically check its state until it will be ready. Uh, to create a guest request, you need to pass the environment specification, uh, which consists of from uh, architecture, operating system, uh, like Fedora 33, CentOS 8, etc. Uh, optionally, you can specify exact pool you want a guest from. Uh, also, optionally, you can specify uh, you want a guest with a snapshot support. And we are working on a adding ability to specify hardware requirements of the guest. Uh, the API exposes all functionality as well as metrics, prim primitives metrics. And the uh, API documentation is implemented using API Blueprint and, uh, and available in the API web interface. Uh, yeah, for better user experience, we have created a CLI called Artemis CLI. Uh, it is used as the REST API to communicate with Artemis and is built using Click Python package. Uh, the output of the CLI is JSON formatted, so you can use it to integrate the Artemis in your CI environment. Uh, next slide. Uh, so let's look at an example. Uh, this is how you send the guest request uh, to Artemis. It returns all available data at the moment. Uh, most interested for us is uh, an address. It's not available yet. Uh, guest name is an ID of a guest request and state uh, states represent internal status of the guest request in Artemis. So in this example, pending means uh, the guest request is in queue, but is not evaluated yet. So uh, after sending the guest request, you can inspect uh, this request by using inspect command. Uh, you need to pass a guest name to uh, as the option to the command and here we see the, the state is changed to the provisioning. Uh, it means the Artemis uh, sent the request to machine provider and wait for response. Next slide. Uh, if we wait a couple of more minutes uh, and send inspect command again, uh, we will see uh, the guest request is in ready state. And so that means uh, the guest is available and we can see IP address and start to work with it. Uh, right, the deployment. We, uh, the, the idea behind Artemis is uh, basically that each teams the uh, teams have different uh, needs and different uh, ideas how their resources should be used. So we try to make the Artemis uh, easy easy to deployable for a team. So teams can deploy easy an Artemis instance, connect their pools, their resources, the services they have available, and uh, implement just a couple of uh, simple routing policies so they can uh, make the best decisions most suitable for their workflows and that's it. We, we don't aim to one solution to solve all problems of all teams. It's definitely supposed to be tailorable for each team's uh, needs. Uh, we are not there yet. It's not that easy to deploy the Artemis, but we are working hard on that to provide Helm charts. And uh, so, so you can easily deploy it as an OpenShift application who, uh, on, on the like, co combined with the best uh, practices for, for these apps. Uh, at this moment, there's also a trivial deployment available for developers that is based on the Minishift or there's a second one, which is using Docker Composes. There are some differences between these two one. Some, some developers prefer the first one and the second one, but uh, it's easy to provide both. Awesome. I think this now Max. So a little bit, just a few notes because we don't have too much time. How we actually did that AWS, OpenStack AWS in RHEL. So RHEL is a, like the, those are tests that run internally. So we had to have in AWS, and VPC, what, what is a virtual private connection connected to the Red Hat internal resources that was set up by our IT department. And once we had this, we deployed Artemis, set it up to use the pools. Of course, we deployed it internally and set up set up it according to the needs. That's how, how easy we implemented basically 
uh, connecting to the uh, or failover to the AWS from an internal internal uh, private uh, infrastructure cloud. Uh, yeah, if, if you would have to know anything about this, just ping me uh, or find me and I, I will get you more information if you are from Red Hat. So our future plans, uh, we plan to write more documentation, more testing, more metrics. We try to focus on stability, resilience and reliability. We already run Artemis in production, so it's fairly stable. We run it, I think, for half a year. So we have quite a good experience about the deployments and everything. But we are working on Im improving the installations, as M Milos mentioned. And yeah, the big feature that we want to have soon is, is being able to correctly specify the hard, hardware requirements because currently it's very basic and we want to be able Artemis to be so it can choose the correct infrastructure according to more specific hardware requirements. Um, yeah, and the CLI, as you see, it's very basic return search and just some JSON uh, and later on it will definitely get improved. If you want to find us, we are on TFT channel in Freenode. Uh, or also on the internal uh, Red Hat IRC if you are an employee. Thanks very much. We are ready for questions. Okay, so first question. Please, could you compare and contrast with Terraform HashiCorp? Of course, like Terraform is awesome. If you are setting up your whole infrastructure, we actually use it for some of our stuff. So, so it's not a replacement for Terraform. Anything is really uh, focusing on usage for CI systems where you can pragmatically pro program have these failovers uh, and cloud bursting. So that is not something you can do in Terraform. In Terraform, you uh, describe basically the environment, how it should set up. Then you run a Terraform plan and apply and you and, you, and the infrastructure is created for you. So definitely Terraform is not, fo the focus for Artemis is uh, different. It's really for mostly for CI systems for provisioning VM resources currently. Uh, next question from Nick Piper. Are you likely to extend and being able to also provision virtual networks, deploy several machines, into that network? Currently, no. And we expect that you do this outside of Artemis, if so. So for Artemis, you, for so outside of outside of Artemis, on the infrastructure, you prepare the virtual networks as you need, and then you use Artemis with this with this failover, for example, if you prepare a network for different in different clouds. So currently, definitely not. We would like not like not like very much to to complicate the current uh, current way of things. But we are in conversations with some internal teams which have these special requirements and uh, we are uh, having talks with them. So if you have some specific things around, definitely contact us and we can talk about it if Artemis could be any usage to you. Uh, Andre Buda, is there a Jenkins integration for Artemis so that Jenkins can ask Artemis for an instance and when Artemis is done? So currently, no. If you would like to write a Jenkins plugin, uh, it, it should be fairly easy because we have a REST API. So the integration, you can do that from a shell step currently, right? So uh, running uh, against uh, or, or like using Artemis CLI, for example, to provision the stuff in shell steps is possible and then to tear it down in some post uh, step. But currently we don't have a direct Jenkins integration. If somebody would like or has, has some groovy experience to write that, we will be glad. But currently it's not our focus. We are not very Jenkins 